All right, so uh, we reintroduced these final equations here for heat transfer. We've already introduced them once. There is one here that's missing, and we got to remember the rules of using these equations. So the first equation that I put up once again is this, Q dot, which I know is in BTUs per hour, or it could be in megawatts, and there's a conversion. One megawatt, if you'll recall, is equal to 3.41 times 10 to the sixth BTUs per hour. So almost 3.5 million BTUs per hour per megawatt. So you should be able to convert back and forth between megawatts and BTUs per hour. So the rate of heat transfer in BTUs per hour, or megawatts, is equal to the mass flow rate times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. So the hot minus the cold temperature. And if we were to use this equation, we'd see that this is in pounds mass per hour for the mass flow rate. C sub P, the specific heat capacity, if you'll recall, was BTUs per pound mass degrees Fahrenheit. And this difference in temperature between the hot and the cold was in degrees Fahrenheit. And that leaves us, well, we start canceling out and you'll see I'm left with BTUs per hour. So this equal sign is in fact true. Now remember, I cannot use this when there's a phase change. So I could use it on the circ water side, but I cannot use it on the shell. It's not allowed because there's a phase change occurring inside the shell, right? So that's the first one. Now, if we were to, that's still the only one that really has any um, rules associated with it. As long as we have enough information, we can use the rest of them anytime we want. So if I was to put a condenser up here, once again, and I put circ water flowing through it, and then steam coming down through it once again, oops, wrong color. Here's what I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume all of the energy out of the steam goes into the circ water. So the rate of heat transfer of the steam is equal to the rate of heat transfer in the circ water. But I know that there's a phase change in the shell side. So if you're following along, one of the equations I could say is, well, mass flow rate of the steam times the change in specific enthalpy, that's what that's equal to is equal to, well, since there's no phase change on the circ water side, I could still set them equal like this. Mass flow rate times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. Or if I knew the change in enthalpy, I could say mass flow rate of the steam times change in enthalpy is equal to the mass flow rate of the circ water times its change in enthalpy. A lot of different possibilities here. Um, and finally, one that we find useful, don't forget, is, is this equation right here. Rate of heat transfer is going to be equal to the overall heat transfer coefficient, U, times the area times the difference in temperature. Where this difference in temperature is probably the most misused part of the equation. This is going to be the average temperature of the hot T hot average minus the average temperature of the cold. Average temperature of the cold. That's what that delta T is. So if I said I had 70 degree inlet water on my circ water and 90 degree outlet temperature of the circ water, the average temperature is 70 plus 90 divided by 2 or 80 degree average temperature. 80 degree average. That's the average temperature of my cold. The average temperature of the hot, well, whatever the shell pressure is here, you use the corresponding saturation temperature. So you just look that up. If you are operating at 1.2 PSIA in your condenser, look it up, that's saturation temperature in your steam tables. And that would be the average temperature. If you somehow had to solve for the outlet temperature, well, you would find the average of the cold and recognize that that average cold was equal to the temperature of the cold inlet plus temperature of the hot outlet divided by two. And if this is what you were looking for, the outlet temperature, you would multiply by two, the average temperature, and then subtract the cold temperature from it. And several questions in the bank having you do that, right? So we'll more on that when we do thermodynamics stuff.